Coach Ben here with CCNS to go over my top three team time trial tips for the ongoing CCNS team time trial series. Tip number one is the pacing. Pacing is so incredibly important when you're doing a team time trial because the idea is to keep everyone together but still go as fast and as smooth as possible. So we'll start with the basics, the starting order. The, the strongest person is the one that starts first. Their job is to get the team up to speed, set the tone for the effort, and kind of get everyone moving. The second and third riders coming through, then keep the pace, keep their speed, and keep the momentum high. That way we kind of get into the routine within the first two to three minutes of the effort so that there's no awkward bobbling or anything like that, which is kind of set and going. Agreeing to the pace was arguably the hardest thing. So we're going to use my team as an example for this. Below you'll see a chart that has myself, Bill Thompson, and Tomas Baradier. That's my team for the Team Time Trial Series. You'll also see our LT wattages, our weights, and our watts per kilogram. The way we talk about the pacing is that we figure out watts per kilogram so that we know kind of where the limit would be for everyone pulling through, and we come to a, like a neutral center there where the effort is hard enough that everyone's kind of able to give their maximum but also not too hard to where one person is going so much harder that the others can't recover on the wheel and they're not, you know, they're, they're suffering on the wheels. That's, that's not beneficial towards the team's effort to go as fast as possible. So you'll see here that Bill Thompson has a watts per kilogram of 4.4 and Tomas have, has a watts per kilogram of 4.6. So they're very close, which is awesome. That makes it very easy to kind of decide the pacing. And then mine's 5.4 watts a kilogram. So what that means is that when we're pulling on the flats, we've agreed to pull between 4.7 to 5 watts a kilogram, meaning that Bill and Tomas will be pulling at 5 to 7% over threshold, and I will be pulling at about 7% below threshold. On the flats, you know, because I'm pulling a little bit below threshold, it just means I'm going to take longer pulls. I'm not going to go any harder. If I go any harder, it's just going to hurt my teammates. They're not going to be able to recover. They're not going to be able to come through as fast as they would normally be able to. So it's, you know, going harder isn't beneficial to the team. Longer is better when you're the strongest rider. Pacing on climbs is where it becomes a little bit tricky as gravity has more of an effect than the draft. So we need to agree on a pace that's about between 4.5 to 4.7 watts a kilogram so that everyone is kind of in their own zone in that they can, you know, still be able to come through once we get over the top of the climb. So, you know, on any climb over 30 or 60 seconds, we're really watching our power to make sure that we're keeping the effort steady and smooth and not going too hard because we don't want to blow up any of our teammates. On any climb under 30 seconds, you know, you do want to keep the momentum. So the effort's going to be a little bit higher just to get up over that roller and keep the momentum and the speed high. Pacing on downhills is easy uh, because the, sh pull the pulls are so short. It's like 10 to 20 second pulls is the maximum you should be doing because it's all about keeping the speed high and the momentum. So you're just taking your poles and you're rotating through as quick as you can, breaking the wind and kind of using the slingshot of the rider's draft to just keep the speed high. You have to be aware about punching the power though, because if you punch the power too hard, the gaps are just gonna open, especially at higher speeds, and you don't want the gaps to open because a teammate having to close a gap at 30, 40 miles an hour is gonna take a lot more effort than if you're just riding smooth. So just be cautious when you're pull pulling through that you don't punch it too hard. You know, everyone who's doing the team time trial definitely knows how to pace line. But some of the tips we have here is you'll see in the top right corner in the picture, the wind is coming from the right. The person on the front should be pulling off to the right to shelter their teammates who are pulling through so they can keep the speed and keep the momentum high. If you're pulling off in just a single pace line as, as they're shown on the left there, you want to come off and you want to drop back as fast as you can and just get back in. You don't want to waste any energy by dropping back slowly and pushing more power than you need to be. The goal is to get back to the, be the last person in line and be able to recover on the wheel as best as you can. Communication in the team time trial is arguably the most important thing. Communication on any team is the most important thing. You need to know how your teammates are feeling. You need to know how everyone's doing, if someone's on a good day, if someone's on a bad day if the heat's affecting someone more, especially in these late July, early August time trials that we're doing here. So I put together some key phrases that you can use even if you're suffering as hard as you can. They're just short one word and they get the point across. So up, the rider in the front needs to gradually increase the speed, but you have to do it gradually. You don't wanna just punch up to another mile or two an hour because that'll just put everyone kind of on their limit. 
easy. The rider on the front pulled through too hard or is going too hard, and gaps are starting to open in the line, and teammates are suffering more than they should be on their, their recovery phrase. Left. The rider on the front should move gradually left to just shelter the teammates from the wind coming from the left, kind of in an echelon format. Just if you're going to move left, make sure the lane is clear to move a little bit left. Don't go into the whole lane, obviously. Right is the same thing. The rider should just move a little bit right. Just be aware of what's in the shoulder. You don't want to take your teammates into anything that's going to cause a puncture or a crash or anything. So just be aware. And then last. Last is something that's so important to yell, especially during these hard efforts. Because, you know, when you're going this hard, your brain sometimes shuts off and you don't remember the order. You don't remember what is going on. You're kind of just in the zone. So last is what the last person in line yells to the rider dropping back so that they get they can be prepared to hop on the wheel. They have, they can shift their gears. They can change their cadence so that they're ready for the acceleration to get to get back on the wheel. Tip three is execution on race day. So in order to have the execution nailed down, you've had to you've gone through the steps of pacing and learned how to communicate. So now we need a proper warm up. I recommend a 20 to 30 minute gradual warm up with at least one five minute tempo and then at least two, two to three minute threshold efforts to get your legs ready, to get your body open up for this effort. They are a longer time trial, so you don't need to go too deep into the warm up because you don't want to burn matches for the effort, but you want to make sure your body's prepared and all the systems are a go. Course preparation. All of these team time trials are done by a GPX file, so make sure you've downloaded the GPX file onto your bike computer with turn-by-turn -turn directions so that you know exactly what's coming. Another key thing is to kind of look at the course profile so that you know the terrain that's coming because that'll help you know when there's a recovery spot coming up on a downhill or if you have to get ready to really you know, give it something on the uphills. If you have a flat windy section where you're going to need to echelon, you can kind of talk about that beforehand. And then confidence, having confidence in your team, in the plan, in your teammates, that goes a long way because when you have the confidence in it, you can then relax. When you're relaxed, you feel in control of the effort and you're very like in the zone and you're ready to go when you're in control and you're relaxed. So that's key to kind of having everything help run smooth. And remember, smooth is fast. And always remember, your CCNS coach is here to help. So any guidance, any tips, any help you guys need figuring out your pacing strategies, the courses, anything like that, please feel free to reach out to your personal coach or myself, and we can help guide you. Thanks.